How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming in this Game Maker Studio 2 episode. We're going to learn how to use the mouse buttons and how to check if we're clicking an object or not. Very simple short tutorial. So let's take a look at the project where we're at right now. So we can, fly, uh, we can move around and pick up these little orbs which are material, adds to the material count. And as you get to uh, 10 materials you can place down an object. And what I was doing beforehand was I was placing... Um, I was using the keyboard short key shortcut to just basically cheat my way to fuel all the the oxygen generator, the O2 generators or whatever. But now remove that debug function. So we press spacebar. It takes 10 materials, and we've got this generator. But it won't do anything, and it won't generate oxygen level. The time's still ticking down, so we're on a timer. We've got to get this oxygen level full before the time runs out. That's the the win conditions, lose conditions, whatever. Now it's an actual prototyped game because there's a win and lose conditions. Um, still haven't made the scenes for that, but whatever. But on to what we're talking about. This uh, thing is now, um, when we left click on it, you can see a little water vapor th uh, animation plays. The same animation that plays when, we, when we're moving around, this little one. But it's filling up the fuel gauge. It's taking the ma materials, and it's uh, as these you know work, they fill up the oxygen gauge little by little by little. So the idea is to roam around the map. These things will just keep spawning, and there'll be some other uh, mechanics to go into how fast they spawn and whatnot, and like things the player can do to either decide and more elements of strategy. But right now, it's a very bare bones, simple uh, little strategy game. <clears throat> you have to decide how many um, uh, generators you're going to create, because it takes five fuel or five materials to fuel each one of them. So you have to kind of come to a good balance and figure out how much uh, can I harvest and, and how many of these can I have active at the same time and you know without running out of materials as well as like uh, is this going to be fast enough before the timer runs out is uh, are are they going to arrive you know are th are all the people going to arrive to this planet before it's inhabitable and uh, if so, you lose the game. They all they come here, it's the last place, and, and the planet isn't ready, and they die. But if you have the oxygen level filled up, you've got enough generators, you know, to turn the planet's, you know, resources, you know, like a greenhouse gas, so that you can get this to a high enough oxygen level for that people to breathe it. Oops, we accidentally hit the... The stage that I might take out, like this is a little platformer. This is, uh, like I said, we're going to make a lot of crappy little projects to um, kind of learn how to do different things. And this was to learn how to do some platforming stuff and also uh, play on some more uh, particle effect type stuff. But as you can see, you can enter the platform stage and come back out and your generators are still there producing oxygen. All of the variables are saved. Uh, with their own uh, objects and of course a master database object that's invisible uh, is storing like all of the the critical game winning game losing data like your global O2 level and whatnot but so you, you kinda go around and you'll pick up different things to increase the spawn rate as well but we have to decide how many generators are we gonna create because we have to make sure we have enough materials to fuel all those generators and if we don't well, then we're going to uh, be wasting materials. That's 10, 10 materials you spent on top of one of these uh, to make a generator, which you could have used that material to fuel other generators. So you find like a healthy medium to keep oxygen, you know, thriving on the planet and, and build that oxygen level before your, your deadline is, is met. Uh, so basically, that's the gist of the game. That's where we're at, and this is why I want to have mouse functionality. So now when we it, we actually have to click on these things to add oxygen, and they're all on their own levels instead of pressing a button, and they all get oxygen. Uh, so now it's uh, it's sort of more of a game now uh, because we have uh, an objective and a win lose condition. But anyway, that's enough looking at the game. Let's go ahead and um, hop into the project and take a look at how we incorporate using the mouse on our objects to to do stuff. <clears throat> so here's our oxygen generator object. It's got a sprite I already created and on the create step We're just saying if the data ma manager is you know vis uh, Generator is visible. This is a switch because this is going to be a persistent object But we're turning off a switch uh, when we go to the platformer stage so that this is still there But everything is frozen and the alarm is is still going off But it's not going to be happening unless it's uh, visible. Otherwise it's just cycling through the alarm. Nothing's happening we're setting our variables right at the beginning as soon as it's visible. 
let's see, right at, yeah, right at the beginning, as soon as it's visible, these are declared. And then on the step, which is every frame of the game, it's, it's doing some calculations. It's saying if our fuel is greater than our max fuel, then set our fuel to our max fuel. This is just to make sure that we can't go past our cap of a, of a thousand fuel or whatever. We also stop the, this is unnecessary the way I built it, but it's just another fail safe we can put in here to say if our fuel ever goes below zero, set it to zero. So you can't have negative fuel. So this is to eliminate negative values. Of course, like I said, this could be emitted the way I've already built it because it's not pulling it unless it has it. But, you know, fail safes are never a bad thing. So on the draw step, this is where it's showing uh, if the switch is on, then, you know, show the, the sprite and draw the health bars for the, the fuel and the oxygen and all that stuff. And then this is the alarm, which is created. It's going to go off eight frames right after the beginning. And then every eight frames, it's going to keep cycling through. And if the switch is on, it's going to see if we have fuel, then animate the object, add to the oxygen, subtract the fuel, play an animation effect. Otherwise, set the image speed to zero. So it's not animated if it doesn't have the fuel. It's not actually moving. Uh, if we have over 100, greater than or equal to a, a 100 oxygen, <clears throat> then we want to automatically add to, to our global level, our oxygen level there and subtract what it is from itself. So if it gets to 100 or over 100, as soon as it gets to 100, it's going to do this. Um, and then it'll set it to zero again and start refilling up because of this is the way the step is set up. Also play some animations and that's it. So here's where the mouse button applies. Now we could take this and put this whole, all this code right inside the step event. And we can say if um, <clears throat> mouse check released I think mouse button left. I, I believe that's that's something, isn't it something? Hold up. Mouse underscore check. What do we got here? Released, yeah, and then um, mouse check button. Press release. So how mouse check button? Um, yeah, that's the thing we forgot to do. Check button release. See how it turned colors. Now it recognizes it. So if we're pressing uh, this button and we released it on this frame, then do what we say here. Uh, we, you know, do that code. <clears throat> so you could do this, and if it's only one thing, you could even get rid of the the squiggly lines. So you could do that right here on the step, or you could do another thing that's kind of e you know easier to look at code when you have a, a large spaghetti line code. Um, you could just add event and then go to mouse and say left down, uh, right down, or middle down, and that's going to make you, uh, I think you have to press it and release it on the same spot. Um, and then this left, right, middle press means you just click it, and even if you move away, it's automatically going to go as soon as you click it. Uh, and then released is, it doesn't matter if you click somewhere else, but if you drag your mouse onto it and you release the mouse button on that, or sorry, anytime you click and release it, it's going to play that. So it's up to you which method you want to use. Do you want them to just click down the first time and it goes? Do you want them to click down and let go and then it goes? Do you want them to just go whenever the mouse is let go? So it doesn't really matter. It's up to you how you want it to work but there's some more control for you. So I'm just saying left release. If we let go of the mouse uh, button on top of one of those things, then it's going to do this. And we're going to say, uh, if we're referencing a variable inside another object. So when you do something like this, you have to make sure that this object is also either persistent or on that scene, on that room, on that map. Uh, and it's a persistent object that's created at the title screen, so it'll always be there. So our, we're going to say, if the material count in our data manager is greater than zero, so it means if we have materials, if we picked up something, right, then we're going to say with the data manager, um, now this is just saying everything we type right here is going to reference inside this object. So we could get away with not doing that. We can simply do the same thing. Like I said, there's many ways to do the same thing uh, in Game Maker Studio too. So you can say um, O underscore data manager dot material count equals itself. You know what I mean? And just copy paste this paste it right there, um, minus whatever we want, right? We could say minus one, uh, and, and that's the same thing. So we're, we're with this line of code, we're doing the same thing as this line of code. So what looks cleaner and easier to read? Well, obviously this one looks cleaner and easier to read, so we're gonna do that. So we'll basically get rid of this line of code, boom, boom, boom. So with this object, do this, material count, take away one. 
and then we're gonna say fuel and we don't have to reference the object because we're no longer using with and the reason why I know we're no longer using with because when you do something with brackets like here like a condition or something or specify an other or something it's only gonna do one thing Unless, say I wanted this to do two things, I would have to use these little squiggly lines. I would have to go like this, and uh, and then other stuff here. You know, I would do my other code right there and do multiple things. Now, we're only wanting to do one thing with this. So, we actually don't need anything else. That works fine. So, with this object, do this, uh, you know, deduct from the variable. And then we're going to say, with this object, because now we're still in this object, when we're not referencing the object dot something, then we're saying this object. Um, we want to basically set this variable fuel to equals itself plus 200. We also have that other thing going on on the step phase to say, if it goes past 100, then, you know, or 1,000, then set it to 1,000. If it goes past its maximum, set it to its maximum. So if we're at, like, uh, 900 and we add 200 and our cap is 1,000, well, it'll for a split second, it will go up to 1,100, but then it will be capped the very next frame at 1,000. So it, it's a... Uh, that's stopping it from doing it. <clears throat> so, yeah, and then we're going to play an animation. This is calling a script call that I've created to, to call particle effects, so... It's like shorthand we're just calling a script here but we're passing in a couple of arguments we're saying x is this and y is that so play this animation at this location otherwise just play this animation at this location so uh if you pr try to press it and you don't have the objects or you don't have the materials then it won't do this it'll just say on the other hand just so it'll just play an animation otherwise so that's basically it you could do this on the step like i said if you do a if condition mouse button uh Mouse check button, mouse check button pressed, mouse check button released, all of those lines of code will work. Also, you can check, check the help file for more information about this. But that's pretty much it, how you can incorporate using a mouse and clicking on your objects to do different things instead of just having them happen automatically. You always use conditions and stuff. Also, a little update on where the project's at. Hopefully, you guys like this tutorial. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please like, uh, smash the like button. It lets me know you want to see more tutorials for Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I've got lots of RPG Maker MV tutorials. I've got Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials. And I do first impression videos, QA testing, and all kinds of other stuff. Playing Jap uh, Japanese RPGs and just, you know, Western RPGs. And just RPGs in general. And I like roguelikes and other stuff. But anyway, if you're interested in anything that I do, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.